Welcome to my overview for shelves from Mutable Instruments. There's four band EQ with a high shelf, low shelf and two parametric bell curve EQs. There's cut and boost and a frequency control on all four bands, as well as CV inputs for the frequency and gain. Those two parametric EQ bands have Q control and also a CV input for that. There's also a global frequency input and gain input and all the frequency inputs are volt per octave, so it's a really powerful EQ unit. I'm going to start with white noise at the input to show the range of the EQ. I'll start with a high shelf and that's got cut and boost and the frequency knob is full range. There's then two parametric bell curve EQs, again with cut and boost and a full 20Hz to 20kHz frequency knob. There's also a Q knob to select the Q curve of the EQ. There's then a second parametric bell curve EQ and then the low shelf. All the frequency inputs are one volt per octave and there's also Q inputs for the two bell curve EQs. Here's some modulation of those. Here's modulating the frequency and the Q from two different sources. Here's a mix of a saw wave and a sub square wave coming into shelves and we can use this as a filter or a wave shaper. Cutting the high shelf and moving the frequency we can get typical low pass style filtering. Adding an envelope to the frequency of the high shelf we can get some filter style modulation. And you can hear the unit clip when we boost the high shelf's gain and then add the envelope on top but as the unit's all analogue the clipping to my ears sounds great. There's then two parametric EQs that can go from wide band boosts right down to thin notches. And it's really easy to shape the wave shape coming in. Pushing all those gains up clips the unit, but to me, as I said, it's got this lovely fat analog saturation. Attenuating the input on the way in, if you want in such extreme EQ boost, we'll get rid of this clipping. So taking this as my wave shape, as soon as the pitch starts to move with a sequence, this wave shape just becomes static EQ, that's not actually following the pitch and changing that wave shape. With the global frequency input we can take a multiple of the pitch sequence and add that to shelves as all the frequency inputs are 1 volt per octave. So you can now hear that EQ following the sequence. Taking it out again it's just static EQ and then sending the same sequence that's going to our oscillator to get this dynamic wave shaping that's following the pitch. So here I've got a filter before shelves, lowering the cutoff on the low pass and adding some envelope movement to the filter, I'll then zero out the EQ so you can hear the sound that's coming in. And just as we did before we can create some EQ wave shaping after the filter which is static and then add the pitch sequence back in so that follows the sequence. So with a simple analogue source it's easy to get some new wave shapes from the EQ. EQ in general I'd say is heavily lacking in your ORAC, never mind ones that can follow you pitch sequences as well. I've got a simple house drum loop playing into shelves. Here's the high shelf EQ.
And as I've mentioned in the video, the red LED is indicating clipping, but as it's all analog, it's giving this kick drum a nice saturated thump. Here's the low shelf. Some simple attenuation on the way in makes it easy to avoid any clipping at all, but as it's really nice analog clipping, I'm gonna leave that in. It's easy to create some simple phaser style modulation by adding an LFO to boost the notch EQ. and this can be fine-tuned easily with a Q control. Here's shelves in a feedback loop with a real-time granular processor Clouds. Watch out for a video of Clouds coming on my channel soon. This is the dry wet on Clouds and what I've got coming in is a simple static waveform from an E350. I have the E350's output going into a mixer and then I've also got a multiple of Clouds' output going into shelves which is on the green stackable you can see on screen and then the output of shelves is going back into that mixer with the mixer's output being the input to clouds. Here's the wet sound again and I'm not going to modulate or touch clouds throughout. Here's turning up shelves' input on the mixer to create the feedback loop and then I'll play around with the EQ. So Shelves is perfect for controlling build-up and quite delicate feedback. And as the gain starts to build up throughout this feedback loop, there's a lovely almost saturated tape delay style build-up in the feedback. And as it's all analog circuitry, the analog clipping helps to create that tape delay wash of sound. Playing with a Q control, you can fine tune those feedback drones that are swelling in. And the feedback here isn't just shelves itself, it's the input of clouds getting louder, the output of clouds getting louder, going into shelves for a gain boost, and then actually going through this feedback chain, creating a level boost right across the patch. Changing the mode on clouds, I'm now going to use the space and reverb algorithm that's built in and then play around with those feedback loops again. So this is all with both clouds and shelves, taking no modulation and just manual adjustment of the EQ on shelves. As you can imagine, with modulation of the granular processing on clouds and the sequences, envelopes and LFOs and modulation to shelves, you can get some really expressive and quite delicate modulation right through to more full-on feedback. Here I've got a percussive sound coming from Elements which has been triggered to the right of the video. Watch out for a video of Elements coming on my channel soon. I've got Elements going into a delay and the delay's output going into shelves for some EQ shaping so here's that delay mixed in. And then turning down the dry signal.
Here's that dry sound mixed in again. So for me, shelves is a really perfect way to shape your effects, be it a delay like here or a reverb or some modulation send you've got set up. This would be a lot more common in the software or studio production, but with shelves you can do this right in your Yoro rack setup. So it's a fairly simple idea with the EQ to shape your effects, uh, but it's already become a really common use of the unit for me. And then adding LFOs and envelopes to shelves, you can make your effects processing more dynamic as well. So I hope that's been useful to highlight the features of shelves from Mutable Instruments. Watch out for more videos on my channel as I'll definitely be making more use of shelves in various videos in the future. Also watch out for videos from the other new Mutable Instruments modules, Clouds, Elements and Streams, which are all going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. Hit like and subscribe for more videos every week.